season of The Amazing Race is an adventure. There are good racers, bad racers, and lucky racers. A good season of The Amazing Race takes you around the world and grips you with its interesting racers and close calls. You will want to tune in episode after episode to see where they go next until it all finishes with a hopefully satisfying conclusion. Each team that we look at together will experience their race from beginning to end from the time that they are introduced until they inevitably get eliminated or win the race. We will look at every character moment and strategic move to determine whether they were a hero or a villain or whether they were good or bad strategists. And with that, welcome to The Amazing Race. Welcome to the start of a very special Amazing Race. Yeah! For reference, we will only be observing what the TV show is showing us and what story is being told through the show. No future seasons will be mentioned as the story and characters here have no idea and therefore are unaffected by those future seasons. All character moments and strategic moves are interpreted with the mindset of what the story is trying to tell us. And with that, before we start, I want to thank you all for supporting this channel. Liking, subscribing, and sharing is so crucial to this channel's growth and its ability to stay alive. But if you want to do a little bit more to keep this all going, then consider supporting this channel on Patreon. You can also vote for which stories I tell and even get an exclusive exclusive Patreon only video each month. Thank you for your support. Rupert and Laura, married survivor veterans, were a team on The Amazing Race 31. Rupert had competed four times on Survivor, usually doing well enough to make the merge and even getting to fourth place on the Survivor All-Star season. However, the last time he played was with Laura, where he sacrificed his game at the very beginning to make sure she could play, and she ended up finishing in 12th place. Can they do better this time as a husband and wife team, or are they destined to repeat their last performance on Survivor and flame out? Let's find out. This season is a special one as it has 11 total teams that consist of three survivor teams, three big brother teams, and five Amazing Race teams all competing on a reality TV showdown of sorts. It has some big brother winners, some great Amazing Race teams. For those wondering who the survivor teams are, you have Corinne from Survivor Gabon and Kara Moen, Eliza from Survivor Vanuatu and Micronesia as a team, and you have Brett and Chris from Survivor Millennials vs Gen X as the other team. Rupert and Laura are the cream of the Survivor crop coming into this season, and the show wastes no time making sure we are introduced to them first before anyone else. I have played Survivor four times and lost the game four times. This could be the time. Laura could be that charm. And by first, I literally mean before anyone else, before any Survivor teams, before any Big Brother teams, and before any Amazing Race teams. Talk about top billing. Phil then asks everyone who here has the edge over everyone else, and it sounds like a bit of a rhetorical question given that everyone seems to respond with an applause and some hooting and hollering, but Rupert makes sure to say loud and clear that the Survivors do. Who thinks they have the edge over everybody else? Oh, the Survivors do. The Survivors in general are very tough. Our 11 teams are now ready to take off. Go! Woo! Go! Let's go on. Right, come on! Hurry! And they are off. Their first task is to dig into this giant sand octopus to find their first clue. Rupert and Laura are the second team to find their clue and are already starting strong. I got one. I got one. I got one. Tokyo, Japan. Oh my gosh. They then have to fly to Tokyo, Japan. And as it turns out, everyone is on the same flight, so everyone is now equal again. At the airport while waiting for their flight, Corinne and Eliza do their assessment of everyone who's on this race and kind of do their typical mean girl routine and make sure to poke fun at quite a few teams, including Rupert by calling him old and out of shape. Rupert is really old. He's got like this big pot belly. Did you save your mayonnaise? Like, he's not exactly Mr. Athletic. They arrive in Tokyo and their task is to get a clue from one of two locations. Now both locations have a limited number of clues, so you have to choose wisely and also be a little lucky. Rupert and Laura have someone do a quick phone search for them to find one of these places. While still searching for one of those two locations, Rupert says that they know they're new to racing and there are veteran teams here, so it's going to be harder for them to keep up but they're gonna need to quickly become veterans in order to keep pace. We know returning players are tough. We're the novices of the group that's going to turn into the veteran. So what do you know? That phone search made all the difference and Laura and Rupert get their clue first and are now leading the pack in first place. I'm a hawker. Are you the hawker? 
You're the hawker. You're the hawker. <laughs> Thank you, sir. They now have to go to the fifth floor of a building to find their next clue. On their way to the building, Rupert says how this is much harder than Survivor, as well as basically doing one big circle and ending up right back where they started. Now this really hurts their placement in the race as they arrive at the roadblock in ninth. Head up, right Edge here. Up. Thank God. Do you want me to do it? Do you want to do it? You got to pick now. I'll do it. Okay. The roadblock consists of each team trying to figure out which one of the shoes on the wall is not real and is actually fake and made of chocolate. Apparently there's only 12 out of like this hundreds of shoes. This is a task that had many people biting into 40 plus pairs of shoes. However, Laura does a good job not taking too long to find the chocolate shoe and they leave the roadblock maintaining their ninth place position. I'm trying to get high after sugar. Mm -hmm. Along the way, they get lost really lost. At one point, they're actually at the right location, but Rupert says, all right, let's just keep going. There's no way it's across the street, which is what Laura just uh, actually recommended. But then the camera pans across the street from them and actually she was right. The next task is right there. There's lights that way. Take a look over across the street. It's not across the street, it's this. That way. At one point, they are shown looking in very poorly lit areas where there are clearly no clue boxes, which are both signs they are in the wrong place. In The Amazing Race, clue boxes are never in these dark places where there are no lights. Shiba Cohen, search for your next clue. We should have our flashlights out. Clues are just normally in a box, they're not hidden. Man. After looking for over two hours in the same park, they finally realize where they need to go and arrive at their next clue in last place. Who wants to climb Mount Fuji? Man, I am ready to climb Mount Fuji. We've only been running around for the last three hours. However, they catch a lucky break as their next task is a roadblock. And this time, Rupert needs to climb a game show version of Mount Fuji while covered in water to get their next clue. This has caused many teams before them to slow down and lose precious time. In fact, one of the veteran Amazing Race teams injures themselves trying to go up the Mount Fuji, and they actually had to take a four hour penalty and are still waiting that out when Rupert and Laura show up. Rupert then makes a seemingly silly task seem very, very serious. I was telling myself, you're gonna run up the darn thing, you're running up the thing, you're running up the thing. I was not gonna let a mountain beat me. However, despite Corinne and Eliza saying he is out of shape, Rupert beasts his way up on his first try and moves them up to 10th place. Oh, he got it on the first try. Good job, honey, first try. They barely scrape by and they finish the leg in 10th place. I am pleased to tell you that you are team number 10. Rupert and Laura, you're still in this race. <laughs> Laura then talks about how great it feels to finish this leg and says how great her husband Rupert did. We knew we were last, but Rupert <laughs> conquered Mount Fuji. Ah, you darn right. After one leg, this was a wild one for Rupert and Laura. They started off strong in America with the octopus, and even when they arrived in Tokyo where they got their first clue, when they literally were leading the pack in first place. However, while every task was no issue for either of them, the actual navigation between clues and tasks really bogged them down and made for major issues that had them barely surviving this first leg. However, they have been fun so far and are making for a very rootable team. It is time for leg two and this time the teams are going to be flying to Laos from Japan. Thankfully for Rupert and Laura, despite starting the leg about four hours after the first place team does, everyone is on the same flight, so all things will be equal once again. Upon arriving at the airport, Rupert tells us that he is already sweaty, but he is super thrilled to still be in the game. We're still here. Yeah. We are shocked. <laughs> thrilled! If you can't tell, we're thrilled. <laughs> While talking with Colin and Christy, Rupert tells them the wild tale of the time they were looking for clues in the dark at the park in the first episode, and he says he forgot he wasn't playing Survivor and he had no need to look for hidden immunity idols. Spent four hours in that park running around looking for a hidden immunity idol, not a damn clue box. Chris and Brett then revealed to us that they're looking forward to racing with Rupert since they are such big fans of him, especially when he was on Survivor. They also say they want to help the other Survivor teams get to the end with them. I didn't think I'd see you guys anymore. I mean, huge fans of Rupert. If huge if fans. You come here. Rupert tells us that the goal of this leg for them is quite simple. They don't want to finish in first or second. They just want to beat one 
team. Now, as silly as that sounds, this is not always the case for a lot of teams, as most want to finish legs in first place all the time, and you will see them continually getting disappointed when they don't do that, making the race just not fun for them because their high bar is not being met. However, for Rupert and Laura, the bar here is very low and very realistic. And our bar is set very low. We just want to beat one team, keep getting more experience, and knock this newbie out of us. They arrive in Laos and team up with Leo and Jamal, a veteran Amazing Race team, to split a taxi that it turns out they didn't really need since the monastery they had to go to is very close. Now on the way there, Corinne and Eliza run in front of their taxi to make sure they don't pass them, which does not make Leo and Jamal very happy. Let's stay in the road so they can't pass us. Look what she's doing! They wouldn't let us pass. They kept they were, doing the snake They move. were throwing their bodies in yeah. front of the tuk-tuk. Hey, come on! It ultimately doesn't matter though, as at the monastery, everyone has to do the morning ritual at the same time together. They all then get their next clue, which says to go to a big tree by the river. As it turns out, at that tree is not only their next clue, but also the first U-turn of the race. And in fact, it's a double U-turn, meaning that two teams are gonna be required to do both detour tasks instead of just one. And for a team struggling like Rupert and Laura, that is a death sentence. Thankfully for them, they do not get U-turned. And in fact, two veteran Amazing Race teams get U-turned instead. But they do arrive in last place at the clue box. We're gonna do barbecue, I think. Yes, We're gonna please. do ABC. They have a choice between picking either learning the alphabet in the local language, which is very different from the American alphabet, or helping scale some fish and slice up some duck at the local market. Now we as the audience will learn that the alphabet task is the faster of these two, and that is what Rupert and Laura pick. They do accomplish their task fairly quickly and move up to seventh place. Oh. 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 Thank you, thank you. <laughs> After the detour, they have to go to an elephant village that sits next to a river, and on their way there, their taxi gets passed by others, and as a result, they arrive in last place. I'll do it. Yes. I'll do it. They arrive at the elephant village, and it's a roadblock, which Rupert volunteers for. Essentially, he needs to ride an elephant while directing it to cross the river and get his next clue from a musician in the forest. Simple enough. However, like some other the other teams, his elephant does not really listen to instruction, but mostly does whatever it wants. Please, God, please. This is insanity thinking that I can control this elephant. Which causes Rupert to try and convince it to go faster by telling it that he loves the elephant so much. And then he reveals to us that elephants are his spirit animals. Elephants have been my spirit guide for my life. Please, baby, please. I can't end on an elephant. I love you too much. Ultimately, the elephant does not reciprocate this love, and it doesn't love him as much as he loves it, and he ends up finishing the roadblock in last place. I love elephants. Everybody's passing us. We're in last place. We just want to go right there. Thank you. Thank you. Run. Run home. Him and Laura now have to go to the pit stop, which is a prince's palace in Laos, which Phil has stated is a possible elimination leg. On the way there, Laura gives him a pep talk in order to raise his spirits. You say we're still in it, but couldn't believe it. We are, we're always still in it, until he says, we're the last team to arrive and you've been eliminated. They arrive at the pit stop and... Very sorry to tell you that you're the last team to arrive. Unfortunately, you've been eliminated from the race. They only lasted two legs, but what a memorable two legs it was. Despite being eliminated, they're still happy and seem like this is just another fun thing they got to do in their lives as a married couple. Been friends for 25. Hopefully we got another 25 years of adventures ahead of us. So let's break this down. How were Rupert and Laura as characters? So much fun. Despite not lasting too long, almost every scene they are in is TV gold and Rupert's love for the elephants, but them not reciprocating it back is hilarious, along with Rupert acting as if completing the Mount Fuji task is like defending his family from a terrorist group. Despite watching this video, you should definitely watch the season of The Amazing Race, as all three of these survivor teams are so much fun, with Rupert and Laura simply being the happy-go-lucky fun team. Out of 11 character moments shown in the show, all 11 were heroic and zero were villainous, making Rupert and Laura heroes on The Amazing Race 31.
Now, how are Rupert and Laura with their strategies? Not great. Okay, that isn't completely true. They were amazing whenever it came to tasks that involved them utilizing their skills and didn't have much luck involved, such as identifying a fake shoe, digging clues out of the sand octopus, climbing the game show mountain, or learning a foreign alphabet. But their actual ability to travel between places and not lose positions along the way was a clear weak point. While it may seem like they got screwed over by a bad elephant, the truth is they were probably going to finish and last even with a good elephant, considering how much time they need to make up and the fact that they arrived last at that roadblock anyways. Out of 15 strategic moments shown on the show, seven were smart and eight were dumb, making Rupert and Laura dumb racers on The Amazing Race 31. Thanks for watching, and if you like the content you see here, then please support me and this channel on Patreon. Your financial support makes all of this possible, so thank you, and Thank you for watching.